We are. I want to welcome everybody that's joining us on our live stream on Facebook. Uh, my name is Jack Wallach. I'm a pastor here at Hope Community United Methodist Church. We're located in Pasadena, Texas. We're about a block and a half east of Preston and about a block and a half north of Spencer Highway. A couple of announcements for just for this week. Uh, next weekend begins our annual conference, which will start on Sunday in the afternoon or evening and will go until Wednesday. Uh, that's the place where appointments are made official and all that good stuff happens. And uh, there are numerous worship services and things to do. It's at the Hilton of the Americas downtown. And uh, our bishop will be speaking uh, on Sunday evening. Our delegates from here are, of course, me as a clergy delegate. Uh, and then Holly is a district delegate now, and so she'll be down there as well. This will be the first chance we've heard to hear from Bishop R. Harvey. Usually they make those things available on a, used to be a CD. You know what a CD is? It, it's, <laughs> People used to use CDs. Uh, before that, they used cassettes. That was the thing had a little tape in it, you know. Uh, anyway, they usually make those available somehow or the other. Well, <laughs> that it won't be on an A track. And uh, and then Wednesday is uh, a very important day for us United Methodists because it's Aldersgate Day. That's the day that John Wesley's heart was strangely warmed. I'll probably talk about that in a little bit. Uh, so anyway, we welcome you to join us on Facebook. We're glad y'all are here with us in the room. We're going to watch our welcome video, and then we're going to sing a new song together. Buckle up and hold on. At our church, we love God. Make no mistake about that. At our church, we believe in God's radical, unconditional, and unwavering love for us. At our church, we believe that Jesus is God. We also affirm that you may or may not believe that Jesus is God. And we're not asking you to change your belief system before you attend our church. We're simply inviting you on a journey toward Jesus. For years, churches have placed a high priority on Jesus as the get out of hell free card. At our church, we place the highest priority on Jesus as a live life to the fullest invitation. At our church, we believe every person has a dream deep inside their hearts and that God put that dream there, not for our glory, but for His. At our church, we're not concerned with where you've been, but where you're going. At our church, we believe that the Bible is God's Word. It is real. It is living. It is active. We believe that people who don't go to church anywhere are not the enemy. They are real people who need the perfect love that only God can give. And we believe that God gives this love through, of all people, us. At our church, we do not and we will not display a holier-than-thou attitude toward anyone. We are all broken people, but He is putting us back together. And finally, and most importantly, at our church, we believe that Jesus really lived, that He really died on the cross, and that He really rose again on the third day. And we cannot and we will not candy coat or water down that message, ever. Today, you've chosen to sit yourself in the middle of a very safe place to hear a potentially dangerous message. Welcome to our church. We've been doing uh, Surely the Presence for a long time. Today, we're going to go back to that, but today we're going to do something a little bit different. Uh, AJ is going to lead us. This is a very complicated, uh, lengthy hymn. It has only these words. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. It has two kind of little verses to it. Uh, We'll sing through it, and then we're going to do it a few times together. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your Jesus, remember me when you come. 
come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Let me invite you as you're able to stand as we sing together. Breathe on me, brother. morning, our first one comes from 1 Peter. The first part of it is in chapter 4 and the second part is in chapter 5. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that is taking place among you to test you as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice in so far as you were sharing Christ's sufferings so that you also you may also be glad and shout for joy when his glory is revealed. If you are reviled for the name of Christ, you are blessed. Because the spirit of glory, which is the spirit of God, is resting on you. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Discipline yourselves. Keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary, the devil, prowls around looking for someone to devour. Resist him. Steadfast in your faith, for you know that your brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. And after you suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. 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 This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. As you're able, would you stand this morning as we affirm our faith today with some uh, scriptures from Romans. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? No, in all things, we are more than conquerors through the one who loved us. We are sure that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.
few minutes, I'll be inviting the ushers to come forward for the collection of our gifts, tithes, and offerings. We have uh, several things we're still doing, and we always need a little help with uh, food for the food box. So if you're shopping and you see an extra can or box or whatever of anything, I don't forget to grab it and bring it with you when you come to church. At this time, I'd like to invite the ushers to come forward for the collection of our gifts, tithes, and offerings. Let us pray. Gracious God, we are thankful for pretty weather. We're thankful for a faith community where we can pray for others and be prayed for. We're thankful for that connection that unites us with each other as we're united with the spirit of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So today as we cheerfully give our gifts, tithes, and offerings. We commit to you, God, that we will use all of this to glorify your name in this community and throughout the world. In the name of our loving Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. As you're able, please stand. together today. We'll be singing Spirit of the Living God. We'll sing it through a couple of times. You're always invited to come forward and pray here at the altar if you desire. know 
But if you don't know, uh, Kim lost her dad this week, Kim Hampton. Her, he passed away day before yesterday? Friday morning. Yeah, Friday morning. And uh, lived a great life, 92. And uh, uh, it's always hard to lose people, but when they've lived a great life, we also know um, we hope to be in that place by then as well. So uh, keep Kim in your prayers and her family. Let's pray. <coughs> Gracious God, we sing, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Breathe on me, breath of God, spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. So many times, God, we have a list and we're happy to list that list for you of things that you already know. But as we near the season of Pentecost, we will hear Jesus tell us that the Spirit will fill us will guide us. It doesn't say anywhere in there that we'll figure out the best thing to do. What it says is the Spirit. So today, God, we come to you leaning on the Spirit. Praying that you will fill this room with the spirit of that living God. And that that spirit will strengthen us. To overcome our suffering. To live through our maladies and illnesses. And to actually be the children of God that you've called us to be. Forgive us when we bring petty things before you. Help us to remember that people all over the world have problems. And it isn't a comparison of whether ours are worse than theirs. We pray for the Spirit to relieve us all so that we can really honestly say, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. We read the scriptures. We know that the disciples struggled. And we struggle. Our humanness demonstrates our frailties. We can be physically hurt. We can be physically sick. But we can also be made spiritually well by our relationship with you. Even the disciples wanted to make it a contest sometimes on who was greater or who would sit at your right hand. Forgive us for our pettiness. Strengthen us with your power. So then when we pray the prayer that you taught us, we do it with the boldness of children of God, accepted, adopted, and brought into your family. As we say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So we all know surely the presence. We've been singing it every week for a little while. So we're going to sing it through. We're going to sing it three times. I would invite you to stand as we sing it and then remain standing for the reading of the gospel.
said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son so that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people, to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you give me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I've made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them. And they have received them. And know in truth that I came from you. And they have believed that you sent me. I'm asking on their behalf. I'm not asking on behalf of the world. But on behalf of those whom you gave me. Because they are yours. All mine are yours. And yours are mine. And I have been glorified in them. And now I'm no longer in the world. But they are in the world. And I'm coming to you, Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me so that they may be one as we are one. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. You may be seated. This bird message is entitled that we may be one. Now, maybe if you get pretty picky and you read that scripture, you might say, well, Jesus is talking to the disciples. But I believe this is a living text. I think it speaks to us even today. And I think my question is, can we answer that question? Can we live our lives that we may be one? There's not much of that going on in our country right now. There's a lot of that we may be separate from each other. And I'm reminded of a couple of groups of people that just really stand out to me. Um, I never went there because I didn't have good enough grades to get in or they wanted me to take more classes. But my, my heroes in life are Texas Aggies. Um, not so fond of the other university. It's down the road. But ain't in. And you may say a lot of things about Aggies, and I know there's a lot of good Aggie jokes and stuff, but they understand that we may be one. They have to change from an alumni association to a former students association, because you know everybody doesn't graduate from AM, some of them just go there for a while. But if you're an Aggie, I, I worked for a time with a guy that had just graduated from AM, we were selling stuff, and he went through the alumni directory. And he could call people, and his only way, he, he didn't tell them what he was selling, he got an appointment because he was an Aggie. They're strong. If you hadn't been to an Aggie game, sometime you ought to go, but be prepared to stand up. They support their group. And the other one that comes to my mind is the Marine Corps. 
Now, I know everybody has esprit de corps, but not like the Marine Corps does. If you know any Marines, if you don't know, I can introduce you to at least one that's in the room right now. But, but if you don't know any Marines, what I can tell you is if a fellow Marine, and they're always Marines, by the way, if a fellow Marine knows another Marine is struggling, they're going to be there for them. They're not going to ask them what political party they're in. They're not going to ask them where they go to church. They're going to be there because they have that in common. Now, I've got to tell you, friends, there's about 2.3 or 4 billion Christians on this planet. Can you see for a moment what kind of power we would have to change the world if we just thought for a little few minutes we're all one? Amen. Amen. <clears throat> We don't need to compete with the people down the road, whoever they are. We just need to figure out how to do what we do better than 10,000 other churches do it. We don't, we're not in competition with them. Let's just be who we are. Amen? Amen. Amen. It's really a simple message. So Jesus describes it to us by saying, the people understood that he and the Father are one. And then he also, because John writes that way, if we're with Jesus, we're one with the Father. You notice it doesn't say anything about Methodists or Baptists. And we make fun sometimes of the other folk, and people have gotten on to me about it, but my Baptist friends and I, we joke about stuff because it's a joke. We're, we're just, we love each other. We just are kidding. But you know, it occurred to me, somebody on the outside might not think we were kidding. Man. What if, what if we started to live our lives and say the words that come out of our mouth in such a way that people would say they know we're Christians by our love? Amen. Amen. How hard would that really be? Now, for me, it means I've got to quit saying some stuff I usually say. I can't talk about tall people anymore. <laughs> but really, the reason we haven't grown as a faith community, I'm not talking about ours, the Christian community, is because we're so separated that we don't have any power. It's called critical mass. There are organizations in our country right now that have critical mass. You couldn't stop them if you tried. But they're not churches. They're not faith communities. I mean, really, you think anybody can stop Facebook now? I mean, Facebook is strong. I mean, it's everywhere. But right now, we're using it to reach people. Why isn't the group of people that we know as Christians demonstrating that kind of love, mercy, and grace? Does Jesus look out and say, if you don't 100% agree with me, I won't tell you to pick up your mat and walk? Don't believe so. Does he hang out with the... the really religious know-it-alls? And not so much. you got to be careful about religious people, you know? I mean, Jesus says that. Watch out for those people wearing robes. <laughs> so many times, we try to pick and choose on who it is that deserves God's love. <coughs> and I'm not sure that Jesus discriminates at all. He does count on those of us that know Him. Okay, you got to stay with me here. If we know Him and He knows us, that means the Father knows us and we know the Father. He's counting on us to be the ones that deliver the message to the people that don't know 
And frankly, I, I grew up, I guess, thinking the way you do that is you read scripture and you point out the error of their ways. I don't think that's attractive at all. I think it is pretty amazing, though, when you can demonstrate God's love in a way that nobody expects. To somebody that can't pay you back. To somebody that can't do anything for you. Because it's not that kind of a deal. Jesus doesn't say go love somebody if they can put more money in the offering plate. He doesn't say go love somebody if they can show up for church more often. He doesn't say any of that stuff. He says go love them and I'll take care of the rest. I mean, if you're an Aggie, it's kind of easy to know who the other Aggies are. They either got an Aggie ring on or they go around with their thumbs in there. <laughs> and if you're a Marine, well, everybody knows they got a thing they say. Except for five, right? What do we Christians say? Amen. 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 What would Jesus do? Well, that's what we should say. Something like, Jesus loves you, and so do I. Amen. But most likely, what we say is, you need to straighten your, up your act, or Jesus won't love you. You've got to go by the doctrines and the polity of our particular denomination. In fact, you better read the Bible just like I do. You see, the problem with that is that I believe that's a living text. So I believe if you read it, depending on where you are that day, what things are happening in your life, what disasters are overcoming your day, you might hear a different thing than I hear. Totally. And it wouldn't make you wrong. I just think we've we got to figure out How to really live out what we just sang about. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Because if we don't, we really won't believe the part when it says, surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Amen? Amen. Amen. And I believe the Lord is here. Amen. And I can feel the Spirit of God nudging and pushing me to be different today than I was yesterday. Yes. With the hope that I can become what God wants me to be in the future. So May the 24th, a long time ago, John Wesley went to a meeting on Aldersgate Street in London. I didn't actually get to <coughs> didn't actually get to go there because they were doing construction. I'm vertically challenged, so I had to stretch up and look over a fence to see it, but it's there. <laughs> he was struggling with his faith. His brother Charles had already come to grips with something he called a heart strangely warmed. And, and Charles, usually it was John telling Charles stuff. In this case, it was Charles telling John, you got to let go and have heart knowledge. Now, if y'all don't know, John was an educational seller. I mean, he was smart, been to school, a lot of stuff. He believed every kid ought to be able to, to translate Hebrew to Greek, Greek to Hebrew in like the fourth grade. I mean, he was a whiz. Sometimes when you're that smart, it's hard to let go and, and, and let go of the intellect and just have faith. And, and, and John had struggled with that, but he was kind of on the outs with this group of people, but he went anyway because sometimes that's what you do. You ever been there on Sunday morning? You get up, you know, I don't really want to go, but I'm going to go. That's kind of where he was. And the person doing the reading was reading the preface to Romans by Martin Luther. 
that I'm quite sure John Wesley knew by heart. But when he heard the words, something happened. And his heart was strangely warmed. So John brought to us something new about faith. In those days, Scripture was always Scripture. Tradition was always tradition. And reason was normal. You wanted to think about what it meant. And John brought something called experience. It's the toughest part of what we do in church is because I can't make you have an experience. I can set the stage. We can sing, Jesus, remember me when I come into your kingdom. We can say, surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can't make you feel it. But there are times in life when you need to let your intellect go. And you need to be willing to just experience the breath of God. When we sing in that song, I can hear the brush of angel wings. Does your mind go there? I can hear the brush of angel wings. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Amen. Man. So I want to go back to that. We, we may be one. This year at annual conference, we have a new bishop. A lot of exciting things are happening. We're going to vote on stuff. And it's my prayer that as we gather from 300 and some odd United Methodist churches, that we can quit quibbling about stuff that's not important and that we as an annual conference may be one in the Spirit of God. And that we here at Hope Community United Methodist Church can do the same thing. We can learn from the Aggies and the Marines. Actually, you know, they should be learning from us. We've been doing this longer than they have. But I believe there's a gift to be given for what we like to call esprit de corps. We ought to be proud to be Christians. We ought to be willing to share it with anybody and we need not worry about the result because guess what? God will take care of that. Amen. Amen. Sometimes we have to be the first to make the invitation. Yeah. We may never see the fruit. But once in a while we get lucky. And we can see someone come into the faith with the excitement of realizing that they now have eternal life because of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I don't know. Maybe we need to have some of that excitement too. I wish we did. I want us to. So, I, I, I'm not talking about all these TV people because I think they're heroes, but... I used to like to watch Earl Roberts on TV because he started off every TV show with Expect a Miracle. How many of you today are out on Facebook tuned in to us expecting a miracle? Well, let me tell you, if you don't expect it, you're going to get it. So why don't we start to expect that God can do amazing things, that God is doing amazing things, that God is healing, transforming, and fixing people's lives spiritually, and He has invited us to be a part of that. Amen. And I think the way we do that is that we may be one. One with the Father. One with the Son. And one with each other. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So, if any of that registered with anybody, 
The next thing we're going to do is sing, Where He Leads Me, I Will Follow. So as you're able, would you stand as we sing together for our closing hymn? I can be my Savior calling. I can hear my Savior calling. Can you? I can hear my Savior calling. Take my cross and follow, follow me. Where He leads me, I will follow. Where He leads me, I will follow. Where He leads me, I will follow. I'll go with Him, with Him, all the way. I'll go with Him through the garden. I'll Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to the whole world until Christ comes in final victory. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Go in peace. Amen. Amen. Amen.